I really regret. Because for one, it wasn't a good act anyway. And nobody, I believe that nobody would support such an act. Mutoto alikosa, aliuwa kama ni kuwa aliuwa, na mungu hame musamehe, na hame opa musamehe. You and another guy he called Matata, and another one called Kibaki. You have been released. I felt like... Three years later in 2015, 27 years since he was arrested and jailed for violent robbery, Joseph Charles Kinyo got the most unusual news from his fellow inmate. The state had decided to set him free. If I may recount, the last time I was free was between when I was born in 1988, until just recently, like uh, two and a half years ago, or thereabout. It was on 12th December 2015. I had just come from one of the rooms that we had been given by the institution where we used to make our prayers. And it was around six in the evening. Then just one inmate, one inmate. And in fact, he was a Maasai. And uh, I didn't expect him to learn of the good news even before me. After I left that prayer room, he came and asked me, Charles, do you know what's happening? I told him, I don't know. You and another guy, he called him Matata, and another one called uh, Kibaki, you have been released. I felt like, <sighs> it's like I had got some relief. But no, because this is this information I was being given by an inmate. In fact, what I told him, I told him, my brother, if anything, you are not the right person to give me such information. Let's wait for those who in authority to come and inform me. Joseph had been a beneficiary of the power of mercy advisory committee that recommended that the prisoner jailed when he was 25 years old at the time, now 55, be set free. The president had heard his cry. In fact, it didn't even take like five more minutes. This, I, then I was called at the documentation office. And uh, when I went there, I met the officer in charge by then, Henry Kisingo. And he told me, Brother Charles, that is how he addressed me, Brother Charles, because we, we used to preach with him in the church. He told me, Brother Charles, know what? you are no longer a prisoner. Then I was like, wow, I'm no longer a prisoner. The very first words that came out of my mouth were, glory to God. And then I told him, now that things have just happened the way they have happened, and this is what we have been expecting for so long, just give me an opportunity and to go and tell all my brothers inside there that God has performed a miracle for me. And he told me, go. So I think I went to each and every block and I told them, now brothers and my brothers, I'm now living for home. God has remembered me. The next person to be informed of the good news was the wife. Because we were given that opportunity to inform our loved ones at home. And I called her. I told her, you know what? God has now come in a mighty way. And uh, when I was calling her, I heard the phone went off. I didn't know what was happening until when I came home. She told me when I gave her, when I broke the good news to her, she collapsed. Siku amini kwanza niliyanguka. Unajua nimekoniwa all through. Nimekuwa nikikoniwa. Mwingine hapa alikuja kanikon. Tisijui anatoka ya 22nd December. Nisijui na convoy. Akatukon. But hiyo haiku nizuia kuzidi kuomba mungu juu yake na kuenda kumtembelea. Mm. By the way, I used to go every month. Na pia, hili niwe nikimuona, niko nimeka picha yake pari kukuta. So, every day, every morning, every evening, nikichungulia picha na muona asifu ya hivu himu. A man who had left home a young father was returning home a grandfather. It was 20 years of waiting, 27 years of pure hope, 27 years of a convict praying for the best and a family hoping for the best. And after that, I made my second appeal in the Kenya Court of Appeal. Again, the appeal was dismissed. And the worst part of it is that uh, 
after the appeal was dismissed in the Kenya Court of Appeal, which of course was the highest court in, uh, in the land by then. When I, I was taken back to prison, they told me in the documentation office that now you have exhausted all the judicial system. Your fate now lies in the hands of only one person, the President of the Republic of Kenya. Joseph had placed his hopes in the hands of Justice Samuel Oguk and Justice V.V. Patel, who dismissed his appeal almost 13 years behind bars at the time. Joseph now turned to the power of mercy commission. When I petitioned the president by then, uh, Honorable Daniel Ritich Arapumoy, that was in 2002, uh, he had my petition and then committed the death sentence into life imprisonment. Joseph Charles Kenyo had served time in prison, time the then president had spent ruling the country before committing thousands of death row convicts to life in prison. You know, this is, it was my first, my first time experience. I had never even dreamed ever being behind the bus, even for a single minute, but it just happened. And after it happened, uh, I used to hear that people were saying that there was a lot of violence in prison. And in fact, life was very difficult there. Being in remand for a period of three years, then being sentenced, everything there was scarce. It was like you have been put under the mercy of your enemies. Though in reality, the orders were not our enemies, but it was like they had wanted to get whatever that was in us using some kind of force, you know, to get that, 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 that crime element out of us. Case files trace Joseph Charles Kenya to Nakuru County, where coincidentally, the crime that will see him spend all his youth in prison was committed. Taking part in crime is the worst thing that a man can ever be involved in. It's a very bad thing. Very, very bad thing. Not only bad, but it is also a foolish action for anybody to take. Because with the crime, it has always been said even elsewhere, it doesn't pay. The wife says Joseph left when she was expecting their firstborn child. I was three months pregnant. Na nilipo ka, nikienda kumuangari one time nika feel ni muulize sorry. Ah, uh, umeniwacha nikiwa pregnant. Sasa umeniwacha kivipi. Maisha yakawa magumu. Nikawa wa, nikaona blackout. When you arrived home, the son was bath, birthdays, school visits in mist was welcoming the father with a grandchild. A sour sweet homecoming for a father. My wife told me that uh, now that you've been away for so long, don't uh ever dream of going anywhere, not until one year is over. And uh, I was asking her, now that you are saying that I shouldn't go, what do, you, what do you want us to be doing here? She told me, you just have to relax. Just relax. Joseph Charles Kinyua left prison at the same time as Joshua Matata, a man who had made headlines for butchering his children and mother. The two, having spent more than 24 years in prison, were commonly referred to as pastors in blue. I wish, uh, just like Alifanya Banayangu, president, please, our kumbuke wari ambawa kondani. Especially kuna moja, wakati tukua tunayenda huku remote parenting, kuna kafijana kitu kamjuku, kari make friend na moja huku wanaitu wakatimu, paka rewa na niulizaga shosh, Kwani huka mwenye alibaki huko kwa mapolisi, anasamani kwa mapolisi, atakuja home rini, hata akuje pia tutembele. So na mwambie hiyo, iku mikononi mwa president. Ayu isha angewa kumbuka watu kama hao, ili wake zao wa furai wile mini ni furai. Ile ishara ya upino wangu. Joseph Charles Kenyon's parents have since aged. The family requested case files not to have them filmed for this show. And fathers say they are a happy lord that after almost 30 years, they are able to see their son back home. Joseph is the only surviving member of the four men 
who staged a daring robbery that left a woman dead. He is now a church leader and preacher. The residents of Hashima and this, I would applaud them. They really welcomed me. All of them, all of them. Even the church welcomed me. The community around here welcomed me. Ni wambi watu Hashima ni watu wangufu, ni wambi ya kofia. And I'm so grateful because of them. We have been living so happily in the community. And even in fact, you can't know that there, there was anything that had happened. They just embraced me and welcomed me. And in our church, when I came for the first time after being introduced to the church, and I was brought my, by my pastors, those who were at committee, the chaplain at committee brought me. And uh, Within the first six months in the church, I was being appointed to be the chairman of the evangelism team. Then just last year, I was again appointed to be a deacon in the church. And right now, I've been ordained as an elder in our church, PCEA, under Reverend Geoffrey Kemani. Joseph insists that the man who killed the Asian woman is still out here. He was never arrested by the police and is still at large, somewhere out there. Joseph Charles King is back in Nakur with his family. The whereabouts of the family of the woman they killed is unknown. Joseph is now trying to pick up the pieces from where he left them back in July 1988. Case files, 27 years later, is now a case closed. Denison Sarigo for Case Files.